So, our topic for today is God's thoughts about us. You know, this is uh, very important, I believe, uh, because, uh, you know, we can talk about His faithfulness that we need, uh, you know, we should, you know, put our trust that God is faithful. He has been faithful as always. You know, He never failed us. But you see, let us, you know, uh, repack it in a way uh, how will that affect us, you know, uh, the, his, his faithfulness. So the thing now is that, you know, as a believer, this is the question. You know, you know we as a believer, this is looks at me. Okay? Try to imagine that. Try to process that in your thought. Now, as a child, okay, how do my, I mean, as a, as a child, I mean, as a father, how do my children look like? Or for children, how do, uh, uh, ch uh, how do my children look like in their father's eyes? That's very important for them, right? So the point is the father's outlook, the father's view of us, okay? Uh, uh, the father's view of them will affect how they see themselves. You, as a child, you know, how the father treats you, you know, what the, your mother and father say about you affects your life and your perception about yourself, right? So, so my point today is that uh, let us examine, let us talk about, you know, how, how God uh, see us so that, you know, we'll have a healthy thought, you know, uh, about ourselves so it's like a mirror it works like a mirror so today let us talk about how God see us uh, so that we can think in a way God wants us to think about ourselves about him okay and so we can enjoy this ongoing relationship with him amen okay yeah. so let's begin number one God thinks we are special yes God thinks you are special. God thinks we are special, a treasured possession, the apple of his eye. Wow. <laughs> That's really precious if you would. Uh, <laughs> yeah, th there's a song, no? I mean, Libot sang that yesterday uh, in our room while I was typing this. And uh, we are his treasured possession. Indeed, of course, we know that uh, literally it w the context was about Israel. But now, because we were adapted, okay, we were grafted in to the vine or Israel through the Lion of Judah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are part, okay, of His family, okay. Therefore, we also are part of those uh, people of His, you know, the, the the chosen people, the apple of His eye, okay. Yeah. So, God thinks, God sees us, okay, God looks uh, at us, He considers us a special people, uh, the apple of His eye. A treasure. Yes, a treasured possession, His delight. Imagine that, I mean, have you imagined... How, how, you know, if, if you're a father, you have this baby, and then you, you, you know, for you, your baby is cute, right? And then every time when you wake up in the morning, you see your baby, you see your baby smile, you're happy. That's how God look at us. That's how God see us. When He see us, He's happy. He feels this joy to see His children. That's why I come to church. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> so le, le, can you give them the the scripture oh, Psalm yes. seventeen eight? All right, keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. Yeah, and the next verse, uh, First uh, Peter. All right, uh, First Peter chapter two, verse nine. Yes, but you are a chosen people, mm. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, mm. God's special possession, yeah. that you may declare, declare. the he praises of, of Him. him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. That's right. Can you see that? Now, this does not talk about the Jew, the Jews only, okay? The Jewish believers. This is for all of us. Peter talking to believers, to born-again believers. He's, he said, but you are a chosen people, okay? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. possession. 
So when the Bible says we are His special possession, that means what? That means you and I are special. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot deduct, you cannot subtract anything. You are special. We are special. Period. Yes. But the enemy doesn't want us to think that we are special to God. Yes. The devil wants to condemn you. Okay. The devil wants to feel you uh, 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 guilty. Kill, still destroy. He wants to yes. destroy that perception. That's right. That you are created in God's image. Yes, that's right. So the point is, we need to have a healthy concept on about God, our Father, mm -hmm. and us being His children, and understand it, you know, in the lens of Scripture, or else you don't have a healthy thought about yourself and God. So very important, my friend. Please, uh, you can repeat this uh, preaching later on, so that you can get more out of it, okay? Mm -hmm. You can get more the more you listen, the more you watch this video again and again and again. The Lord will uh, give you more revelation, okay? Yes. A deeper revelation for you to understand how special we are, okay? So we are that special, a chosen people, royal priesthood, holy nation for God's the Lord. Man, special, 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 okay? <laughs> Especial. Especial. <laughs> <Spanish>. <laughs> okay, so that w we have more scriptures on that, but, you know, I we just pick some of those. Uh, so think about this. The other thing is that some people think, uh, you know, when they think about God, they think that, uh, they think of an angry God, you know, that God is angry. He's full of, he's furious because you're not, you're, you're, imperfect you are you, you're always in sin <laughs> you always fail him you know you you do not you know uh, meet, up meet the his standards <laughs> on holiness oh, yeah. and so people you know they're afraid oh no I don't want to go to church oh no I don't feel worthy you know things like that we have so many alibis you know why why we, we should not continue to 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 love God mm -hmm. you know why because we think God is that angry. <laughs> okay? He's, he's short-tempered. He's easily angered. Th that's how people think about God. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. We are His treasured possession. When Jesus died on the cross, paid for our sins, and you gave your life to Jesus, therefore your sins are acquitted, paid for, yes. forever. So, by the blood of Jesus, because you are born again, you gave your life to Jesus, therefore you are made righteous before God. You are. Now you are special before God. Yeah. So you are not entitled to feel condemned. <laughs> you shouldn't. Yes, because uh, in Christ, there is no more condemnation. You yes. know, Romans, it is in the book of Romans. Okay, to those who live in the Spirit. Okay, that's what it says. So, God, remember that God is not angry with us. God is not angry with you. Okay, listen to this. This is the word of God. God is not angry with you, but He rejoices over us with singing. Oh, that's, that's another scripture that we want, the, uh, we, uh, you know. Because we picture God as an angry God, but the Bible pictures God as someone who is slow to anger. Okay? We picture God as somebody who, you know, easily angered. No, no. The Bible says he's slow to anger. Can you read that? Yes. Uh, Psalms, Psalms 86. 86 15. Mm -hmm. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, mm -hmm. slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Wow. See that? So it says, You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger. And abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. That's why I like the song. What a faithful God have I. What a faithful God. <laughs> what a faithful God have I. You're faithful in every way. You see, God is so faithful. All right? So. That's a very good <laughs> yes. promise. It's an opposite of what we think of God. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, mostly, most of people thought 
that God is not interested with them or with us because of our imperfections. But that's the opposite. You know what? Because God knows that we are not perfect, we're flawed, okay? We, we commit mistakes, we are in this sinful nature in the flesh. Oh, that's why He came and died in our place, so He yeah. can make us holy and righteous before His sight. Yes. What does that mean? It means we are special. Because if we're not, why would He do that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so again, we are actually the apple of His eye. Amen. Okay, that's Psalm 17, verse 8. eight. So, uh, the, the last one, I mentioned about He rejoices over us with sin. Can you read uh, Zephaniah 3.17? The Lord your God is in your midst, mm. a mighty one who will save. Mm. He will rejoice over you with gladness. Yeah. He will quiet you by his love. Yeah. He will exalt you over. Over I mean he will exalt over you with, with loud singing. Okay, NIV? Do you have it? Yes, it is there. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. Mm. He will take great delight in delight you. Delight in you. In his love he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you. With singing, singing. There's, oh. an, there, there's an old song that says, He rejoices over uh, was it? He rejoices over you with singing. <laughs> Something like that, okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's, that's our God. Wow. That is our God. Okay? So uh, there's no time for you to be discouraged and, and, and you know, to do self-pity and feel low and lonely and mm -hmm. come on guys wake up it's time to arise let your light shine understand and know that you are God's special possession we are God's special possession hallelujah yeah hallelujah, hallelujah. amen okay let's go to the next point which is number two God is confident that we will overcome our trials. Amen. Can you think, can you imagine that we have a father who believes that we can? Only us think that we cannot. <laughs> okay. When we face trials, when we, 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 we have challenges in life, oh God, so hard, I cannot do it anymore. Well, you can pray like that. But that is what you think. That is how you think. That when you face trials, it's like, oh, I can. It's like uh, the, the disciples uh, when when they were in the boat, uh, and there was the storm, storm. okay, and, and the they were drowning, and Jesus, was our sleeping. Lord Jesus, was sleeping. <laughs> all right, and the Lord, you know, hell, we're you know we're drowning, we're gonna die, and SOS. things like that. <laughs> but Jesus was sleeping, and then Jesus said, "Peace be still." Everything stops. And then what? He said, oh, thou little faith. Th that's why in church I said, if I were there in that boat while there was this storm, okay, I know we're sinking and the water is com com go coming in the, the boat and you can hear the sound of the, the, the wind blowing and the, the big waves. But if I know that Jesus was there sleeping, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move back. And and sleep beside him <laughs> <laughs> because you're tired. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, oh, if this thing goes down, we go down with him, right? But you know, God is God. If the boat is sinking and you know the Lord is there in the with you, well, nothing to fear. Yeah, but you know, uh, so God is confident. That we will overcome. We can. You can, my friend. Whatever you're facing right now. Okay? Uh, can you read the scripture? First Corinthians chapter 10. Let's read it, read it for them. No temptation has seized you except mm. what is common to man. Mm. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted be beyond what you can mm. bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can stand out. So you can stand up under it. Yeah. In in our uh, in our language, uh, we call it sigurista. You know that that's how God is. You know He wants to make sure that we 
uh, we are the winner, okay? <laughs> that we win. The, that's why for God, we are victors, okay? We are victors, sure winners, okay? Because He will not allow trials that we cannot bear or that, uh, you know, that we cannot get on top of, that we cannot deal with successfully, okay? So, we will win a victory over our trials if we, you know, we follow his principles like last week we mentioned about hear and obey right oh, the, yes. the the principle of hearing and obeying so that when the storm comes your house will stand okay so he also provide a way out that, that's what the scripture says okay so meaning to say uh okay for the enemy it's cheating because <laughs> uh, we have a back backer okay back up okay it's god no he will provide a way but there, therefore, sin for us is an option. Okay, it's we're not obliged to sin anymore. That's in the book of Romans. Okay, because we've been freed from sin. Now we are what uh, uh, obliged to righteousness. Okay, not in not to sin. So sin for us in an, is an option. That's why when we are tempted, the Bible says, you know, God will not allow temptation beyond our limits, but he will provide a way out just in case okay but now you, we understand uh, the only way for us to fail in this kind of test is when and only when the only way to lose uh, the battle or the, the, the in in the temptation is when we let the enemy win yeah when we yield to sin it's our choice but we're not obliged. But anyway, God has a solution in case, in case we fail, in case we yielded to, 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 to temptation. All right? So God is good because even if you fail, He will uh, help you up. You know, you will not fall prostrate to the ground. He will, he's going to help you to stand yes. again. Okay? So when He allow, when He allow you to face trial, you know, Come to think of it, you know, what, I mean, what does God want me to do? What will God do? Will God help me? Yes. He is there for you, okay? And He will provide you a escape pad just in case. So it's your choice. Why does God give us choices? Why does God sometimes, you know, from time to time allow us to fall and then, he will, you know, help us up again, okay? But we will not really fall to the ground because His arms is there to catch us. Why does He allow that? And sometimes we feel pain because He wanted us to learn more than just, more than just, you know, winning always, uh, I mean, doing the right thing. Uh, if you don't really understand, you know, sometimes pain will 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 magnify the teaching okay it, it, it's gonna help us understand we learn from our mistakes and we learn mm -hmm. okay so and i hope you get it okay so so even if you it looks like you're losing the battle god will provide a escape pad okay yeah, so I mean. why because we are his special possession <laughs> Yeah. Number three, number three, we only have four points. Okay, this now is uh, we're uh, at number three. One half. <laughs> half. God expects us to repent and start over when we sin. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's say, okay, the, the Lord promised that uh, He will not allow trials we cannot bear. And if we are, you know, somehow... Because the, 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 the trial you're facing is like uh, um, like a Goliath to you, <laughs> okay? You think it's so huge. And then, uh, just in case, you know, God provides you a escape pad, but even the, 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 the escape pad, you choose not you know, to get in the escape pad. Uh, and then, you fail, you sin again, and you feel condemned. Still, God has a, a way out of it mm -hmm. wow the second escape pad is this repentance <laughs> okay so 
Can you read the scripture? Okay. Uh, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Wow! So still, okay, even if you choose to jump, okay, uh, in the mud, okay, <laughs> and, 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 you know, after that, you, you look dirty, you know, disgusting unclean. maybe unclean and smelly you know and you feel n not worthy anymore to come before God because you know you you've caused God so much pain you've offended God that's what you think but he thinks you're special that's why he gave his life so my my point here my friend if you confess your sins he's faithful and just and will us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness if what if we confess our sins so what is God expecting of us he is expecting that we confess our sins we come to him we return to him we repent of our sins okay we repent of our sins when we sin okay so if this is the right direction and you went the wrong way this direction God is expecting you to turn around. Okay? Just Sin? like Jonah. Yeah, just like Jonah. Go back. Get back to your first love. Okay? So, if you've lost your way or you have fallen into sin and find, uh, uh, and find it hard to return, find it hard to return to God because you feel condemned and, uh, and then, you know, it's not in our lineup but it's in Luke chapter 15 verses 3 to 7 okay I want you to understand this parable that you know that describes the father's love for us okay so don't let it get by you this morning guys you know take it in the, the revelation and think about what it means this uh, Luke chapter 15 think about what it means in your life okay today right now okay Luke 15 3 uh, Jesus told them this parable. Okay, listen to this. What, um, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, one hundred sheep, if he lost one of them, just one, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? Wow! That is the kind of God that we serve our Lord Jesus Christ Yeshua Mashiach is our greatest and chief shepherd and what do I mean by that that if he has 100 sheep one is lost one you know went his own way he was led astray he, he, he went out of the group of the flock you know what God will do he will leave the 99 okay okay guys guys come here okay stay here okay he will leave the 99 and go look after the one that is lost yeah. you know if I have 100 sheep and we're moving I how will I know I lost one <laughs> you cannot because all you see are okay okay there's many of you you know but God knows even if one is lost and if that is you my friend if you are lost right now he is after you and you quit running away from him okay <laughs> quit running away yeah god you know will, will will pursue you wherever you go whatever you do you know him you gave your life to jesus even if you force yourself to to commit to stay in sin as long as you're here as long as you're alive he is after you because he loves you amen you know what? So, you, listen. He will leave the 99 and go after the one that is lost. And then what? Until, until, until when? Until what? Until he finds the one that is lost. And if that's you, my friend, until you are found, until you are brought back to him, until you are brought back to his will, he will go after you amen wow now do you understand this is just a glimpse of who god is to us he will look after so please stop running away from god 
Amen. Okay? Be active. Serve Him. Come to church. The Bible says, Blessed are those whom the Lord finds the doing when He comes. So, you see, even through this pandemic, serve God. Keep on serving God. Amen. So, that's not my topic. So, let's, let's continue. And it says in verse 5, And when He has found it, when God finds the, finds lost, the lost one, yes, He lays it on His shoulder, hmm? Rejoicing, yeah! Okay, again, that's the, the scripture that says He rejoices over us with singing. So, so when God found us, when God has chosen us and we respond to Him, man, God is so happy with rejoicing. He rejoices over us with singing. So the Bible says in verse 5, rejoicing. Verse 6, and when He comes home, He calls all together His friends and His neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my ship that was lost. So there is going to be a big celebration just for that one person who was lost and now has been found. Wow! Imagine that, my friend. That's a great revelation right there. So, verse 7 says, so, so, Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over than the one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. So, God, guys, you are a special possession. God spared nothing in search for you. Nothing. Okay? He exhausted everything. What do I mean by that? He gave his life. Wow. You are his treasured possession. We are his treasure because he never gave up his search until he found us. Until we are found. Never gave up. And the only way to do that is that he would lay down his life so that he can bring into justice so that one day when we stand before the judgment day, Okay, one day, we, he can declare not guilty. Why? Because our lives belong to him. Because we committed our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We entrusted our lives to the redemptive work that Jesus did in the cross 2,000 years ago. If you have never given your life to Jesus, now is the time that you give your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's why John 3, 7, Jesus said, you, you must be born again. Yes. You must be born again. It's not a suggestion, my friend. It is a command. A requirement. A requirement, will. yes. Because, I mean, he was talking to a priest. Priest. <laughs> wow. That's John chapter 3. He was talking to Nicodemus, the priest Nicodemus, who's not an ordinary priest. He is on the top level priest in Israel that time. Member of the Sanhedrin, that's the senatorial level. So he's not just a spiritual religious person, but he's on top. So he memorized the, he knows and memorized the law, the first, the five books of Moses, Pentateuch, we call it. But you know what? Even if you memorize the Bible, the law, if you're not born again, Jesus said, you will not make it. You will not make it. Yes, you will not make it to heaven. So, my friend, we are special. He came. He died in our place. So I, this is my plea. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. If God gave His life to die in our place, how important do you think are we to Him? Hmm? So more important than His life on earth, right? Because he gave his life in exchange. I mean, a so substitutionary death on the cross for us. Instead of us dying for our sins, he died for us. He replaced us. He took our place. So let me ask you. Uh, can you die for others? Or will you give your life for others? Oh. Will you give your life for someone? <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too much to ask for. Somebody will tell you, hey, can you die for me? Can you die? <laughs> <laughs> will you do that, my friend? I know the answer. The answer is no. <laughs> we cannot die for others. Right? Unless, okay, unless they are that precious to us. 
Wow. If we think that the person that we the, that we need to die for is a person who is more important than us, mm -hmm. so important to you, then you will be willing to give your life just for this person to live, right? Oh. Yeah. So, can we give our lives to others? No. Nah. Unless they are precious. precious and important. So, that's why, again, we go back to point number one. We are his special possession. Treasured possession. We are special to God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay? So, I hope you understand that. Um, that we are precious. He gave his life so we can be forgiven. So, instead of ignoring God or running away like Jonah... Come to Jesus. Repent. Repent and He will accept you. You will Amen. not be put to shame if you come back. Come back. Return. Uh, this is, I posted a picture in my Facebook, what do you call it? The cover photo. Cover photo. <laughs> About returning to God. Because that's my revelation this, this week. I believe there's so many people right now because of this pandemic, okay? Because of this pandemic uh, so in Visaya, na bugnaw na sila you know they, they just lost they, they got, got cold and lost their first love and now they're just comfortable wherever they are and you know you know life is easy taking <laughs> mm -hmm. things easy now friend the more you seek god in this in in times of trouble okay so uh, last point we have god sees our potential he believes in us okay god sees our potential to learn from our mistakes and outgrow our imperfections. Wow. Mm -hmm. Not just that He allow us to fall to sin and then recover and then if uh, we yielded to sin, He has a way out. He wants you, expects you to repent, confess your sins so that He can cleanse us and forgive us and make us pure before Him. Uh -huh. But now, what now? So what happened? What, what's next? You know, what is the the uh, overview or, or or how do we see i mean what is the big picture after allowing all this because through the trials through our uh, victories and through our failures god will be glorified how because you will outgrow okay your weaknesses your imperfections you will learn out of it. I hope you are learning out of it. <laughs> because there are a lot of people <laughs> I don't understand why why they have to go to the hard knocks. What do you call this? Uh, they go the hard way. The hard way. I mean... Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, you see there's a cliff right there. You fell from that cliff Same. before and then now you're going to go back there? Come on. Okay, so God sees our potential, our growing perfection. Uh, God, uh, can you read the scripture? Uh, what's the scripture? Second Thessalonians. Uh, but th uh, three, uh, chapter three, verses three to five. Yes. But the Lord is faithful; He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Mm -hmm. And we have confidence in the Lord about you that you are doing and will do the things that we command. Mm -hmm. May the Lord direct your hearts to mm. the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Wow. Wow. There's 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 a lot of insights from the scripture that was read, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just speak some, okay? It says the Lord is what? Faithful. Faithful. Wow. Second, he will establish you. He will establish you. So that's the point, my friend. So when there, uh, there are times you lose, uh, but, but of course, even if you lose, you will win, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because in the end, the Lord will win you back and then you will repent, so you win, okay? When you, when you confess your sins, you win, all right? Now you're back. So, so in all of these things that happens to us through the years, you know, I've been a Christian for many years. And I've been through ups and downs and I've learned you know a lot of things some some easy way some the hard way okay <laughs> and i don't i don't suggest you go to through the hard way it's it's not wisdom it's stupidity it's <laughs> foolish so but the bible says he will establish you that's in verse 3 
and guard you against the evil one. So imagine the, how faithful God is. We, we, we think everything is okay, but you see the enemy is out there, you know, 24-7. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy, but you are not destroyed. You are not killed. Why? Because of the faithfulness of God. Because of His protection. And then what? It says, God will establish you, meaning He will teach you, He will train you, mm -hmm. He will equip you, yeah. He will build you up, He will mature you, He will develop you. Amen? Develop mm -hmm. you until you reach full maturity. That's the goal. So you are being established. Okay? I mean, given roots, foundations. Now you learn what it meant to hear and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, thing is, um, uh, I remember my children uh, before they were, I don't know what age were you when I started to teach you how to play the ukulele, you know. Hmm. You remember? I think I was six or seven. All right. Okay, him and his brother, Jaril. And then Joey, I, John Wesley, I, I taught him basics of the violin, you know, the, the scale, major, two major scales and two minor scales. But look at him now. Look at them now. You know, they're, they're better now. I mean, they, they, they're good. Although, but, but the thing is, I teach them because I want them to excel. Okay? I teach them because I believe that they can do it and they did it. Okay? I teach them because I want them to master the basics. And now, they, they, they added the uh, improvisation, improvisations <laughs> and... Uh, and their own style. They develop their own style, etc. So, I believe at some degree that is how God sees us. He allows all these trials and problems so we can learn things and master it and become better and better. It's for our betterment. So, my point going back, that is how God establishes us. That is how God matures us. Right? So, uh, so, our responsibility is to keep growing and to never stop growing, okay? Our responsibility is to keep learning and to never stop learning. Our responsibility is to keep on following our Lord Jesus Christ and to never stop following Him, okay? Never stop serving Him. So, part of our growing process is our failures. There will be failures. We will fail. But cheer up. God is with you. God is there for you. And He will bring you up ba back up. Okay? Amen? Amen. So, hallelujah. Whoa. So, last, I think, uh, oh, yes, what, what is it? Oh. <laughs> He All said right. amen, and then I just saw amens on the comments. Oh, yeah, right. From Kuya Thank Marjun, you, guys. Thank you, guys. Chris. Love you guys. Okay, last scripture before we end because it's uh, 838 now. So, okay, Philippians 1, verse 6. And I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Okay. So what what do you think? <laughs> wow, that I think that's that's the point. Mm, that's, that's the point. <laughs> so we are a that's work it right there. We are a work in process progress i yeah. mean you know god is w working on a project mm. and the project is us <laughs> and we're not done yet yes he's not done yet he's not us. done yet with us so he, he is making us something perfect uh work masterpiece you know is it's this it's something because we are special. Yeah. And so you have to understand that even through ups and downs and failures, do not be condemned. Don't think God hates you and don't think God <laughs> is so furious oh, about yeah. you because you're not measuring up, okay? You're not measuring up in His standards, so you think you are no good at all. Well, that is not oh. biblical. <laughs> you are special. You are His treasured possession. Come yeah. home. Come home, come home, okay? So understand that we, that God is living in us and He's changing us, He's molding us, He's, He's, He's using us and He is gonna, uh, you know, for His glory, okay? So for His pleasure. So that is why He is 
transforming us into the likeness of His Son, Jesus Christ, be for His greater glory. Amen. So, again, if there's someone sitting beside you, you tell that person, you are a work in progress. All right? You are a work in progress. <laughs> so, you are a project that God is working on and you will not uh, and you will not be complete until Christ comes back. So, yes. that's it. So, uh, I mean, his work. I mean, uh, in NIV it says, He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. I think that's what the song says. So, I mean, you say, yeah. He's going to, you know, complete his purpose and his intention with each one of us. So, trust God that he's working. Okay? And he's really working. Yes. But what is our role? Cooperate. <laughs> okay? Cooperate with God. Amen. And, and it's very important that our hearts and our minds are tuned. That we know how to act accordingly. How to respond. How to behave. Okay? How to, 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 to submit. To flow with God. We need to tune our hearts to Him. And one, one way to do that is to read the Bible and pray. Uh -huh. To be in the presence of God, to be in worship with God. Because when, when we tune our hearts in worship and the presence of God comes and you feel it very strongly, you know, things will change. Your worries will go. You know, heaviness will go. You know, the, the, the negative things will be lifted. And then you will be given answers to your questions you know uh, 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 confusion will leave because now you have insight you have understanding you have wisdom when you study the word the Lord will enlighten you you know the Lord will quicken your spirit and you will understand something that is why man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God from the scripture and from the Holy Spirit Spend time with God. Spend time with His Word. Spend time with God in prayer. Cry to Him. Worship Him. Love Him. See, you have to be in tune with God always so that you know how to cooperate with God and so that uh, 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 the process, the processing is faster. <laughs> Amen? The processing is faster. So, example, we, we edit videos, okay? If the computer... Uh, renders it or yeah. crashes and renders very if it takes a long time for for those processing yeah for us it's 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 a waste of time that's why we wanted computers that are fast fast <laughs> okay why so that you know you can save time same with us you know don't you know go on circles at the end of the of the day what have you accomplished yeah nothing if you're not doing things for God, if you're not cooperating with God. If you're procrastinating. If you're procrastinating, right. But if you respond to God, if you repent of your sins, if you give your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, man, your life will not be wasted because He loves us. Okay? So I think uh, that is all for today. Uh, God will finish what He has started in you. Remember that. What He has started in you, He will finish it. Okay? And always remember that God is working in you, in us, because we are His special and treasured possession. Yeah. Amen.